Well, thank you, Mario, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today, the, this morning. Uh, as we are in the midst of uh, National Volunteer Week, uh, definitely the best time to recognize families who give so much of themselves uh, to help others. And it's uh, also fitting because it is the best time of the year to launch the Community Spirit Program. As announced uh, earlier this week, this program has uh, two components. It's an enhanced charitable tax credit and a donation grant program. And uh, Lindsay, what I'll do is I'll leave it up to you to explain the two. Uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because uh, uh, when I was um, running for leadership in this province, uh, there was something that was brought to my attention. And in fact, we had a number of meetings in this very same building that we had a lot of money, uh, of course, that had left Alberta for worthy causes, but it left Alberta went to other jurisdictions or other provinces. And yet we had, uh, of course, the same challenges as other jurisdictions to uh, keep uh, some of the, 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 the money that Albertans wanted to share with good uh, uh, nonprofit agencies for various tasks, but uh, maybe sent it to other jurisdictions and didn't keep it here. And that's why we uh, were looking at how do we enhance the charitable tax credit to encourage Albertans to spend their hard-earned money on those areas where they thought um, they would want to support. So Albertans making the choice of, of uh, supporting the not-for-profit uh, not agent, non agency that uh, they desired. And of course, volunteers deliver services, it doesn't matter where, in sports, health, education, uh, communities right across the province. And there's no doubt that Albertans contribute more of their time, volunteer time, than, than any other jurisdiction in, in Canada. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to share with you why, to me, personally, uh, volunteerism is uh, important. I recognize it as a value and a quality of Albertans. And it was uh, a few years ago uh, when I, uh, I started grade one in Andrews School, and uh, not that many years ago, but it was, it was, it's getting to be uh, a lot of years, and uh, unfortunately fell off uh, the slide. Uh, had to be a very big slide because I broke, broke both of my legs, uh, significant fracture just below the, the hip joint, and uh, today, of course, uh, probably been flown by air ambulance and operated and pin it and you're back home in, in, in a few weeks. But not uh, at that particular time where the bone had to heal on its own over a long period of time. So I was in traction uh, in Mandir Hospital for uh, two months and another uh, just about a month in a wheelchair in a, in a body cast. And as you see, I'm perfect health uh, standing before you today. But the reason it was important uh, is that uh, my first language uh, was Ukrainian. When I started school, um, and how things have changed since then, but when I started school, um, if you did speak a few words of Ukrainian or any other language, it didn't have to be Ukrainian, other than English, um, the teachers then were instructed to reprimand the student. So the first three days were pretty tough. Um, but having spent the time in hospital, um, the hospital in Mandare was run by a voluntary organization. It was called the Sister Servants of Mary Immaculate. This is a, an order of uh, sisters that built hospitals during the mo one of the most difficult times, economic times, in the province. Uh, that was between 1928 and 1930, and Mandare and Andrew and Vegreville. And uh, what they did is they coordinated volunteers in the community to teach me uh, uh, English, uh, how to read, uh, arithmetic, today it's mathematics, but some of you may re remember the arithmetic textbook. Um, and uh, what happened is that uh, every evening, um, and even during the day, the patients, it was a six-man uh, ward, today it's a six-person ward, but it's six men in, in one room, um, and uh, the sisters would actually ask individual patients to read, to me to do uh, math with me, and um, uh, after three months coming back to Andrew School, uh, where uh, I remember it's a very cold day, and the teacher, you know, I just remember her peering through the door. The, uh, didn't open the door wide open for some reason, just 
a few inches and, and uh, told my mom and dad, I said, better take Ed home. We'll start next year, you know, no problem. Uh, he'll do okay next year. And mom and dad, especially mom, convinced the teacher to allow me, uh, you know, give him a few days and see how it works out. Well, I never did look back, at least for that year, uh, with uh, private tutoring, uh, three months of private tutoring. But forever and ever, uh, that is indulged in my memory, the value of volunteers, how they helped me personally. And uh, it was something that uh, volunteerism was, uh, it was a very, a huge part of our uh, upbringing when I talk about our, my, my, uh, my sister and my brothers. Uh, because the family then, uh, if there was a catastrophic event in the community, there, were no, there weren't a lot of government services then. It was all volunteers. Pre, you know, premature death in the family, um, uh, just uh, illness, perhaps uh, uh, house burning, uh, some, some issue in the community. The volunteers got together Im immediately. Uh, love of music through volunteer effort in the school, after school, where I uh, learned to, to play the tuba, uh, which then I regretted it because I had to lug the thing around <laughs> in, in parades. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, those are all, and they, this is time taken out by individuals. It wasn't, and as you know, as volunteers, it wasn't money that was, uh, what initiated that. It was the heart, uh, the warm feeling you had in the heart, because you saw improvement in, in an individual. You improved the quality of life for others. And this is all about volunteerism. And so that's why I'm so proud as the Premier of this province and member of our government, together uh, with Lindsay, we share the pride. Uh, uh, that we, we have in Albertans. Uh, and this is one huge area of improving quality of life for all. And uh, when I travel this province and I see the number of volunteers, especially working in long-term care centers that offer additional support, uh, those are the, the members of the community that have had some issues to deal with. If it wasn't for all the volunteers, we wouldn't have the kind of quality of life that we enjoy today. So with that, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming this morning. Uh, and uh, we'll leave it to uh, our new minister, uh, who is very, very passionate about his, uh, his responsibility. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, we couldn't have picked a better individual because he himself is a tremendous volunteer together with his family. So, Lindsay, uh, leave it up to you to explain the program. Thank you so much. <laughs>